Welcome to Regis Pre-Algebra. This is Lesson 10A, and we're talking about uh, your Unit 2.8, where we're adding and subtracting compound measures. The first thing I'd like to do is review with you for a minute on some of our previous units. When we are converting from one unit to another, for instance, from yards to inches, you have to recall your conversion property, and we know that there are 36 inches in every yard. So, for, so 36 to 1 yard, we have 18 yards, so we would need to multiply 18 by 36 to get our answer, 18 times 36. In the next one, we have bushels. These are dry measurements and pecks. We recall that we have uh, four pecks for every bushel, for four pecks per one bushel. So we would need to multiply 97 times four to get the number of pecks. So this would convert to inches, this would convert to pecks. And finally, another example for you, if you have feet in to yards, we recall that we have three feet for every one yard. So now, because uh, we're dealing with the, uh, the unit of conversion on the left side here, we would have to divide 6 by 3 to get the number of yards. We have 3 feet in every 1 yard, so you would divide this into groups of 3, and you're going to get the number of yards. Okay, so that's what you've been doing, really, for the last several units until we got to speed, which we talked about length, lengthily the last time. Now, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to skip over biblical measures, and we're going to talk about the addition and subtraction of compound measures. So let's say we have 8 pounds, 8 ounces. This is why we call this a compound measurement, because we have 2 units here, both pounds and ounces, we want to convert it all to how many ounces, because that's my smaller unit. Okay, So we have to take our eight pounds, just as we were doing before, convert that part of it to ounces. There's uh, six, oops, 16 ounces in a pound, and so we would multiply 16 by 8, So that would work out to 128 ounces, and then you would have to add that to the additional 8 ounces you have, giving a total of 136 ounces. Let's look at a second example. If we're going from quart, or we have one quart, one pint. Okay. Well, how many pints are in a quart? We have uh, two cups to a pint, two pints to a quart. Okay. So we are going to have to multiply my quarts times 2. So this is a little easier because 1 times 2 equals, we're converting this to now 2 pints. And then we have to add that to the one additional pint to give me 3 pints in all. The last example here that I have would be Weeks to days, again, we're going to the smaller unit of measurement, so that would be the days. There are seven days in one week, so I would have to take my 15 weeks and multiply it by seven, and that would be uh, 105 days, but we're not finished. It's a two-part problem. And then you're going to add the additional six days to give me a total of 111 days. So that's the first skill. How do you go from a compound unit to the smaller unit? Now let's look at the second skill they want you to master. Okay, so let's look how we would do it if we were go moving to the larger unit. Now, in this first example, of course, the larger unit is the pounds. So I still care about my conversion, but now I need to move 8 ounces to 1 pound. And so you're going to take your 8 ounces and you're going to 
divided by 16, and that is going to be one half pound for my for my eight ounces right here. Okay. So that would be one half pound. Of course, you're not finished yet because then you have to add that to the eight pounds you already have. And so you would get eight and one half pounds. And of course, that's the example they give you. Now let's look at a couple more examples. Let's say we're going to move now to the larger unit, which is cups. We have three fluid ounces and there are eight ounces in a cup. So I need two, eight fluid ounces. And so I need to take my three ounces, divide by eight. I can leave it as a fraction. That's perfectly good. And then I'm going to add it to my four ounces that are, or four cups. So now it's three eighths cups. And I'm going to add it to the four cups I already have. And so I would get four and three eighths cups for my second answer. Okay, let's look at one more example. We know there are uh, seven days in one week. That's my conversion factors written above. And I'm converting again to the larger unit, which is the weeks. So I need to worry about this four days and convert that to weeks. And again, you would do that by dividing and just simply make it a fraction. It's, it's just so easy if you do that. Now, none of these examples have... Well, except for the first one, have you been able to simplify the fraction? But always simplify your fraction if you can. And then we would simply add the six weeks to it, and we would get six and four-seventh weeks. Okay, so that's how we do the first two skills, moving to the larger unit or moving to the smaller unit. Now, the third skill they're teaching in this section is how do you add compound units? So, first thing we do is we align our units. If we have 11 feet 3 inches and 23 feet 8 inches and 5 feet 11 inches, we align up our feet, we align up our inches, we add all our inches together. So we'll get 11 plus 8 more is 19 plus 3 is 22 inches. We align up our feet and, and add those. We get 5, 8, 9, Two and one more is 39 feet. And then we cannot stop it there. We need to take the smaller unit and make sure we convert to a larger unit if they have um, another one. And in other words, if we're taking 11 inches and we're converting it to feet, recall there are 12 inches in a foot, in one foot. And so we would take smaller unit to larger unit. We would divide by 12, and we're going to convert this time to a mixed. So that would be 10 twelfths left over. Okay. Or I don't really even have to do it that way. Let's not write it that way. So if we convert it to a mix, we would have one foot for the 12, and then remainder 10, so there would be 10 inches. So I'm going to take that one foot 12 inches, and add that one foot to the 39 feet. So now all together, you're going to get 40 feet, 10 inches. So I'm going to show you a couple more examples of that. Again, we've got these measurements. These are compound measurements because they have more than one unit, pounds and ounces in this case. We align up the pounds. We align up the ounces. We add the ounces together, and we're going to get, um, let's see, uh, 13 plus 9 is uh, 22. I'm sorry, 20. Um, yeah, 22 and 8 more is going to be 30 ounces. And then we're adding up the pounds, and we're going to get 26 pounds. And again, we're not finished because we take the smaller unit, and there are 16 ounces in one pound. And so how many groups of 16 30 divided by 16. How many groups of 16 go into 30? And the answer is 1. 
So there would be one pound, and what was the remainder would be, oh, let's see, 1614. 14 ounces. So we're going to add the 1 pound to the 26 pounds and we're going to get 27 pounds 14 ounces. So again you're not, but maybe the only thing that might be a little confusing is you start off with this fraction but I'm not going to write it as if I did my division I'm, I it would be 1 and 14 sixteenths, and then typically you'd think to reduce. You're not doing that. You're just t talking about the whole number as your larger unit, and the remainder stays your smaller unit of measurement. Okay, so hopefully that's clear to you. Now let's talk about subtracting fractions, or subtracting these compound measures. This is perhaps the trickiest of the four ideas because we have the idea of borrowing. If we have 15 pounds, 3 ounces, and I want to subtract 6 pounds, 7 ounces, I always start with the smaller unit here, and I cannot subtract 7 ounces from 3 ounces. So I need a larger amount up here, so I need to take away one of my pounds. So rather than having 15 pounds, now I will have 14 pounds. Well, one pound, I took one pound away, and one pound is equivalent to 16 ounces. So now I have that 16 ounces from the one pound I borrowed from, plus the three ounces I had originally. And so now in the ounces place, I would write 19 ounces. So it's no longer 3 ounces, now it's 19 ounces, and now I'm in a place to do a good subtraction. This would leave me with 12 ounces and 14 minus 6, or 8 pounds. So I'd like to do a couple more of those for illustration. Here's another one. So here we go. Always look. Look in your lowest unit and decide, do I need to borrow or not? Well, my 6 needs to be taken from my 4, so I do need to borrow. So I'm going to erase that little arrow now. So yes, I need to borrow. So I go over here to 61 weeks. I'm going to convert it to 60 weeks. Now, that one week that I borrowed is 7 days. And then I'm going to add that to the 4 days I already have. And I'm going to get 11 days. And so I just cross through here, and now I've got 11. 11 minus 6 is 5 days, and 60 minus 18 would be 42 weeks. Okay. So that's how we do these problems. Um, that's all <laughs> for this section. So I have some time left. I think I'll go ahead and put the next section 2.9 on this same tape. So we'll go to the next page. So to multiply is not very difficult. We only have to worry about making some conversions in our answer. So here we have six weeks, five days, and we want to multiply by three. So I'll multiply both the days, getting 15 days, and the weeks, getting 18 weeks by 3. Now all I have to do is to clean up my answer by converting my days to weeks. We do this just the same as we did in the addition. Uh, there are 7 days, or when we're converting to larger units, okay? So we have 7 days in 1 week, and so we're going to divide the 15 by 7. That goes in two whole times. So that's the number of weeks. And the remainder, so 2 times 7 is 14. The remainder is 1. So that's the number of days. Now remember, we're not converting it again to um, like 2 and 1 seventh where we'd have a mixed number with a fraction. Instead, we are converting it out into the different units. So again, now we would line these units up. So then we have 18 weeks okay, to add to that. 
and now we get 20 weeks and one day. Let's look at a couple more. Okay, let's say we have 37 yards, 21 inches, and we want to multiply by 8. Again, we would multiply our inches, giving me 168 inches. We would multiply uh, 8 times 7, that would be 56. 8 times 3 is 24, 296 yards. And now the only thing is, is I cannot leave this here. I need to convert it to a mixed number with yards. So how many inches in a yard? The answer would be 36. And so we're looking for groups of 36. Okay, so you could take out a uh, calculator at this point, or you could just be patient and go ahead and divide this out. So again, all you're looking for is the whole number, and then you could uh, stop with the remainder. You don't have to go into a decimal part because that is the number of inches you're left with. So you take your 296 yards, and you're going to add it to your 4 yards, and you're going to end up with 300 yards and 24 inches. Now let's look at division. Now, when the divisor goes in evenly into both the units, it's quite simple. You would just say 24 divided by 6, or 4 hours, and 6 divided by 6, 1 minute. And there's not much to that. But that's not usually what happens. Usually we have something a little less neat than that. So let's look at a better example. Now, you always want to make sure... This is not what we did when we multiplied. We started with the smaller unit. Here we're going to start with the larger unit. So 5 goes into 203. Well, 5 goes into 24 times. And then we would bring down our 3, and we have 3 pounds left over. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, okay, 5 goes into... Uh, Okay, got a little ahead of myself, so bring down the 3, and then 5 goes into 3, zero, t oops. 0 times, okay, so we would have 40 pounds, because that makes sense, uh, with a remainder 3. It, remain it makes sense because 40 pounds times 5 is 200. So we have a remainder of 3 here, and we need to convert this 3 pounds two ounces. Well, we know there's 16 ounces in one pound, so I'm going to take 3 times 16, or 48 ounces, and I'm going to add that to the 7 ounces I already have above. So now I'm not dividing by 7 ounces, but I'm dividing by into 55 ounces. And 5 goes into 55 11 times. So we would have 40 pounds, 11 ounces. Now I'm going to give you a couple more examples of this. Okay, 5 goes into 12 2 times. That would be 10 with remainder 2. So I need to convert these minutes into seconds. Well, I know there are what? 60 seconds in one minute, so 2 times 60 is 120, and I need to add that to the 30 that was already up there. So that would be 150 seconds. Now I need to divide my 150 seconds by 5, and 5 goes into 15, 3 with a 0, so that would be, I should keep my unit here, 2 minutes 30 seconds. Let me show you one more, because I think this is a little trickier for you. Okay, here's the third one. So 7 goes into 18, we're going to, uh, 2 times, and that's going to give me, so that would be 2 pounds, so that'll give me 14, and I have a remainder of 4. I need to convert this pounds to ounces. So I'm going to multiply by 16, because there's 16 ounces in a pound, so 16 times 4 is going to be 64, 
add the two ounces I already have, and you're going to get 66 ounces. This one has a remainder, so I wanted to be sure to illustrate this. So now I'm dividing the 7 over here in my divisor into 66. Well, 7 times 9 is uh, 63, and I have a remainder of 3. What do I do with that remainder? Well, I'll set that part of it as a fraction. So 7 and 3 sevenths. Why seven? Because that's my divisor over here. Seven and three sevenths. I mean, I'm sorry, nine. I don't know why I'm reading seven here. Nine and three sevenths ounce. ounces. Okay, so there's my answer. So when you have a remainder in your smallest unit, go ahead and set it as a fraction over the divisor. Deal with it that way. All right, so that should be good for your practice.